Okay, uh, last uh, week we made the first lesson and uh, I told you that uh, I recorded the lesson. Actually, I didn't, so I just started now. You didn't lose so much. What are we going to see in this, uh, in this uh, class? Okay, this is just uh, a rather, I mean, complete or, or complex uh, uh, block scheme about what we are going to see. Let's, uh, let us consider just a robot that is interacting with the world, okay? Actually, we don't see <coughs> the world, but we have a bunch of sensors that are coming to a big, I mean, world model <coughs> or estimate, or for the ones of you that study dynamic systems, for example, this is a, a common filter, an extended common filter, particle filters, uh, any kind of uh, approach that can give us information about the robot and the environment. The robot, we are interested about position, velocity, acceleration of the joint, and the factor. The environment, we are going to, to be interested, <coughs> for example, in the position of uh, obstacles, or if there is uh, a tool that I have to grasp the exact position of the tool. Okay, so we do need a kind of uh, perception system. We are not going to cover this in this in this. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about sensors, but without uh, entering into big details. Then uh, our world interacts with the robot. What does it mean that we are experiencing interaction? It has to be considered in the physical sense. If uh, I'm touching the table, it means that I'm exchanging force with the planet. And I need to probably control those forts. If I'm flying and there is wind, the wind is the interaction from, from the world to the robot. Okay. And this interaction is a force that enters into the dynamics of my world. Then I have a, a first inner loop with C. C <coughs> means control. Very generic this uh, scheme. It's just to understand a little bit all the different perspectives we need to take into account when we uh, study robotics. Control means I should have the capa capability to move the robot in the way I want. So if I need to go in that configuration, I should have a feedback controller that moves the robot in that configuration. Okay. So the output of the control is a force. I mean, it's not important now <coughs> the meaning of the acronyms of the variable. We will see several times in the future. But just understand that I have a first control loop here. Then I have another control loop. The control loop that makes the conversion from the end effect of movement to the joint. What does it mean? If I want to grasp something, for example, I have here an object, and this is my end effector, okay? the intuition says, okay, you just have to, to move along this segment. But, but this segment is not a segment in the joint, and here is where, where my motors are. Okay? So this guy here is controlling the motor. This guy here is making this uh, mapping from the Cartesian space to the joint space. Okay? So, 
trajectory that goes around. And if there are some uh, students working it, I have to change the trajectory. So this is motion planning. It's a little bit uh, higher abstraction control aspect. Okay, it's a little bit higher abstraction. Here, I'm controlling the motor. Here, I'm controlling the end effect. Now, I'm controlling the desired movement. Okay, so I'm raising the abstraction lever. And then, we can have uh, a high level, totally generic, that is kind of a decisional control loop. <coughs> Shall I take the door on the left or on the right? This is a high level decision <coughs> control loop. We are not going to consult. Okay? This is a very generic and is true for more or less any kind of robotic application with a lot of uh, differences, but it's very generic. We are going to stay here. Okay. <coughs> then so we will understand that uh, the concept of uh, control frequency. What does it mean? If I want to decide if taking the left or the right door, I can take a while to decide. I can have one, two seconds, I think, and then I decide. Okay. If I need to avoid uh, an obstacle, I have to do it uh, in, a in a reactive way, fast. If I have to compute the forces, I have to do it at the <coughs> higher possible frequency. Okay? This is a concept that is very common in control theory, the sampling frequency or, or uh, the, um, the sampling time, sorry or the sampling frequency. Usually the highest the better. Okay? But if I have several control loops, uh, we need that they are somehow arranged with the higher closed loop coming from outer to inner control loop. This should be faster than this, faster than this, then faster than this. Okay? This is very generic and we will uh, come back on that later. Okay, so <coughs> So let's start talking about kinematics. Kinematics is the relationship between the joint positions. We haven't defined yet the joint, we will do it. But for the moment, joint is just the model for the, my robot. And uh, the end effector position orientation. So the end effector position orientation is my hand without the finger. What is the relationship, the mathematical relationship, in order to be able to design a controller? What we do need now is to have some uh, mathematical background about those concepts. What the rotation matrix is? Do you have any prior experience of rotation matrices? 3D? Okay. Can you raise the hand? Who did it? Who did study rotation matrices? 3D rotation matrices? Just so <laughs> Why you are you are not sure? I mean, <laughs> was, we we did an image processing, but we didn't spend so much time on it. Okay. We, we just saw the matrix. Okay, itself. no, no. I mean, not the fact that uh, no in the universe uh, there, no. there is the concept of rotation matrix. Who then? I mean, worked a little bit uh, at least uh, one lesson, two, three hours with the rotation matrix. You did it. Some yeah, of you, some yes. Uh, magistrale uh, informatica, no, I know. Mechanical engineering, no. Uh, that's strange, because usually mechanical engineering students they do have this background. We will, uh, we will, I mean, see today. It's not a problem. Then we will see some uh, possible representation of the orientation. Okay. The concept of orientation is a little bit tricky, and 
we have to spend uh, some time in trying to understand how to represent the orientation of a rigid body. So this is a rigid body. The orientation of this object, it's the intuition says, okay, you just put it in that way, those are different orientations. Okay, just extract some numbers associated to the orientation. Because to the position it's easy, but to the orientation we need to think a little bit. And then, okay, homogeneous transformation, we will see, is just a tool, very simple. And we can then, next lesson, start studying the direct what is the direct pneumatics? The direct pneumatics is very simple. I read the joint position from the sensor and I have to write a small function that give me, <coughs> gives me position orientation of the meter. Okay? And we will be able to do it only after that we study this. Okay, then joint and operational spaces, kinematic calibration, we are going to skip it, just the definition, and we start studying a little bit the inverse kinematic. Okay, but today we will say here. Okay. Let us see how to represent the position and orientation of a rigid body. For the position, I think there are no doubts, no problem. This is a frame, call it reference frame, and we will use the Greek letter sigma to represent it. And uh, a so-called body fixed frame. What does it mean? You have a rigid body and we have a frame rigidly attached to the rigid body. Okay? So we have inertial frame and rigid body frame. The inertial frame way to, the, to denote it. Inertial frame, world frame, base frame, they are all the same. We have a fixed frame and we will refer our quantities to this frame. Okay? Then, of course, the body fixed frame is attached to the, to the, to the body we are going to study. What is the position of the body? Well, it's quite simple. This is the rigid origin of the body fixed frame and this is the vector that is connecting the origin of the base frame with the origin of the body fixed frame. The three coordinates of this uh, vector is the position. Very simple. It's a concept that you all already have. Okay? And then for the orientation, well, for the orientation we do have uh, a frame that is attached to the rigid body. Okay? So in order to represent the orientation of this rigid body, one possibility is, okay, so let us represent the unit vector of the rigid body frame. Let us represent those vectors in the base frame. Okay? So this means that in order to represent the orientation of the rigid body, I need to write down three vectors. Each vector is three by one. Okay? So X prime here is the sum of three elements, X, Y, and Z. One is a scalar, that is the projection of x prime along x. So x prime x is x prime transpose x. What does it mean? <coughs> if I write x prime transpose x, it means that here I have three components. For example, I can see no, this should be unitary, sorry. on the 
interpretation, this one? Uh, cosine? No, no, the, the T over there. Transpose. transpose. Why do I need the transpose? Because the vectors are only column, yeah. okay? They are not row vectors. Uh, a convention, just a convention that we do use in this class. Uh, this is bold face, okay? Vectors are bold face, lower case. Matrices are bold face, upper case. Scalars are mathematical font, not bold face. Sometimes you can have uh, some uh, specific cases where the convention uh, is <coughs> not satisfied for specific reasons. Okay, but this is the convention all along the, the, the slides and in the in the text. Okay? Okay, so This operation is a projection from the geometric type. This is a projection. So we are going to project x prime on x, y, and z, and we are going to, we will have those three scalars, and we are going to multiply it by the unit vectors x, y, and z. And those are three vectors. Okay. This is just a systematic way, not yet uh, any interpretation of it. I do define the rotation matrix just by putting x, y, and z prime in column. Okay? For us, this symbol <coughs> is the delimiter for vectors and matrices. Okay? So I'm telling that here I have x. Three by one, three by one, and three by one. So the rotation matrix is a three by three matrix. Okay. However, those nine numbers <coughs> are not independent one each other. We do have some constraints that needs to be <coughs> satisfied, and those constraints arise the way we developed, we build this. First of all, x y, uh, x prime, y prime, and z prime, they are orthogonal one each other because <coughs> I selected them in that way. When I say a rigid body uh, fixed frame, frame means composed by three unit vectors, unitary norm and orthogonal one each other. Okay. So there are some constraints. First of all, the orthogonality constraints, three, co three constraints. The unit norm constraints, additional three constraints. <coughs> I do have nine numbers with six constraints. So three degrees of freedom. Mm -hmm. That is coherent with our intuition of orientation, okay? The orientation is something that I mean, in my intuition, uh, has three degrees of freedom. The tool, the mathematical tool that we introduced first, so the, 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 the rotation matrix, apparently has sign nine numbers, but with six constraints. So three independent variables. Okay. We can study the property of the matrix, and uh, we can discover, just by <coughs> very simple computation, that R transpose R is the identity matrix. This symbol, I, with the three here, means the identity matrix three by three. The identity matrix. <coughs> okay? But this means also that the inverse of um, a rotation matrix is actually its transpose. So this is a very specific matrix for which the inverse does not need to be computed. It always exists <coughs> because it can be demonstrated also that the determinant is equal to one. This is plus minus one for left right frame. For us, it's, it's one. Okay. For the convention that uh, we are going to do, is the de determinant is constant. It's always one. This is 
due to the fact that the rotation matrix comes from the composition of unit vectors, so with the unitary norm. It can never be zero. One column of zero, you will never have one column of zero. Okay, so the terminal is always one, the matrix is always full rank, and its inverse is the transpose. Okay. Just the definition. Let's start trying to understand a little bit uh, what does a rotation matrix represent, okay? And we will see three different uses of the rotation matrix. Let us start with uh, a our <coughs> base frame is just the same as is here but from the top view okay and if, if you see here Z is pointing out from the blackboard the convention when is pointing when it's pointing in the blackboard is this one, okay? Pointing out is just a circle with a small dot inside. So this is the base frame. And this is another frame, okay, with the same origin. I want to compute the rotation matrix. So I simply take the unitary vector and I project it. So x prime projected on x is cosine of sub. Only cosine of sub so because the length of this segment is done by construction. Okay? So this is the sine of sub. Here we have cosine of sub. Okay? Then this element is the projection of x prime along y. From here to here. Okay? Sine of sub. Then the projection along Z is zero. It can be better represented here. Okay? And so we brought the first column of the matrix. The second column is trivial. And then the projection of the third column is the projection of Z prime on itself, because they are equal. Okay? And so it's 0, 0, 1. We built a rotation of the angle alpha around one <coughs> of the unit vectors, Z. We will always make the convention that the Rotation are positive in counterclockwise. Okay? We can do the same with the rotation, elementary rotation around Y and elementary rotation around, around X. Okay? Of different angles. We can see easily just by visual inspection, so without mathematics, but just looking at the angle, cosinus and sinus, we can see easily <coughs> that the rotation around one of the three unit vectors of a certain angle is equal <coughs> to the transpose of, uh, sorry, around a certain, a certain angle in minus, is equal of the 
first is the interpretation is the rotation is uh, a mathematical operator that allows allows me to implement uh, represent a rotation from one frame sigma to another frame sigma prime. Okay? So this is a mathematical tool that we can use when we have to rotate frames. Okay, and this is the first use of the rotation matrix. Sorry. Yes. Can you go back to the previous one? This one? Yeah, it's enough. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, let's see the second interpretation of the rotation matrix. by three numbers, okay? It's three coordinates. It is the projection of P on X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z. This is P. And first project on plane, then on X, this is P, X, P, Y. We project here and P, Z. Okay. Let us take a second frame. with the same origin rotated with respect to the first one the same point the same point will have different coordinates okay different numbers of course and here you have the graphical projection the first here on the plane, then here we plan x, we plan y, we plan x. Okay. Okay, it can be easily shown that P is equal. Well, this is a projection, so x prime. <coughs> y prime is a prime multiplied by p prime. So it's equal to what? Well, the rotation matrix multiplied by the same point in the rotated frame. Okay? At the same time, if I have that p is equal to r p prime, and I want to extrapolate p prime, I need to left multiply here everything turned off but <coughs> okay uh, to left multiply by the inverse of r so In order to find P prime, I have to left multiply by the inverse of R. Okay? Then R minus 1 R is the identity matrix. The identity multiplied by a vector is the vector. So here it simply disappears. And I have P prime is equal R minus 1 P. But R minus 1 is R transpose, and so the prime is R transpose. Okay, so very, very easy. I do know that it exists because of the property of R, so 
no problem. Let's see a simple example with uh, a planar view. So, a planar view of a rotation around Z. Z here is going out from the plane. I have X, Y, X prime, Y prime. Only one point, okay? This is the same point represented in the two frames. <coughs> okay. By uh, simple trigonometry, I can demonstrate that pay x is e equal pay prime x multiplied by cosinus alpha minus pay prime y multiplied by sinus of alpha. Okay. By simple trigonometry, I can verify that this is satisfied. Then for the y to a, then for the z is simply the z equal to the z. Do I demonstrate it what I want to demonstrate? Yes. Because around Z of a certain angle alpha, okay? And this is P prime. If I want to make uh, this matrix vector product, uh, the result is, this is 3 by 3, 3 by 1. So the result is 3 by 1, okay? First line multiplied first uh, and only column. So it's cosinus alpha the prime x plus, but there is a minus, sine <coughs> alpha, the prime x plus zero. Okay? The second element is the second row multiplied by the vector, and the third one is trivial because I have zero, zero, one multiplied something, p prime z. Okay? So it's just a a way to verify that that this one is correct. Okay, just with a simple case uh, with some zeros, uh, we can we can we can touch with one, our ends that is true. Okay, so this is the second interpretation of the rotation matrix as a tool. <coughs> it will allow us. Uh, to represent the same the same point in different frames. Okay? So if I need to, to transform the coordinates of a point from one frame to another, I can use this tool, the rotation matrix. Okay? The rotation that represents the transformation between the two frames. Okay. Third uh, use of uh, the rotation matrix. <coughs> Within in the same frame, I can rotate the vectors, okay? So, if I have uh, a vector P prime, and I multiply it by R, I obtain a vector P that, interpreted in the same frame, is the same vector rotated according to the rotation that is embedded in this rotation matrix. Okay. Uh, let's see first the, the, the plot in the next page and then I'll come back. Okay. This is a graphical interpretation for the planar case, easy to see. I have uh, my the prime, <coughs> alpha is a certain angle, my rotation, uh, the rotation that I'm using is, rotation, is a rotation uh, around Z of a certain angle alpha. And if I multiply it, I uh, multiply it by three prime, I have the same vector rotated. Here, the equations are the same as before. It's a different interpretation, but it's the same. Okay? And we can see by 
by trigonometry that this is uh, uh, true. Let's come back uh, on this. Pentransposed paper from the mathematical aspect, what is it? Uh, the uh, product of vector with itself, so. So? Basically, one. one. No. Is a one uh, is one if you have a unit vector. Interval. So what is it? Uh, with the absolute value, uh, length. Length square. <laughs> square. Yes, is uh, let's see. I mean, I take uh, a generic x. X supposed x is. No, no, no. It's For example, only with the two elements. Okay, just to just to understand what we are talking about. Okay? Yes. What is this one from the mathematical <coughs> aspect? Length. We don't have the square operation. So it's not the length. This is a square norm. Uh, but, okay? So here, we just demonstrate that we are not changing the length of the vector. We are only rotating the vector. Because this is the square of the norm, the transpose plane, then I just substitute R by prime here and here, and uh, I just simplify R transpose R. <coughs> just, I would like to be, I mean, I would like to, to be really as precise as possible with the risk to be to be pedantant. P is R P prime, okay? Here I have P transpose. I need to transpose also the operator. So this is R P prime transpose. Prime transpose, R transpose, R P prime. Okay, if I have uh, A, B transpose, this is B transpose, A transpose. The same with inversion if they're all square and all will pull up. Okay. Okay, nice. So we do have uh, the three interpretation of the three use of rotation and they are equivalent to me. I can use depending on what I do need in a certain situation. So it's the orientation of frame with respect to another. It allows me to represent <coughs> the same point in two different frames with common origin. And it allows me to rotate a vector staying in the same frame. Okay, those are the three uses of the rotation. Okay, but what if I do have uh, uh, to compose rotations? Rotation 
from this rigid body with respect to the base plane. So I need to compose all the rotations. This is what we are going to, to try to do now. Let us consider three frames with common origin. So sigma is the letter we use for the frames, 0, 1, and 2. Okay, there are three frames. And then we have the same vector expressed in the three frames. And we will have uh, three variables to denote <coughs> this vector. Okay? P with the upper script 0, 1, and 2. Of course, uh, we can have the rotations among those three frames. And we will denote with this convention subscript I and uh, um, upper script J the rotation of uh, sigma i with respect to sigma j. Okay, so this is the rotation from j to i. We know that this holds, but this is true for, for any rotation <coughs> method, so it's always true. And then, uh, well, we just saw a few minutes ago that the rotation matrix is a tool that allows me to represent the same vector in two different ways. So the first equation is nothing new. It's just what we have just seen. With different symbols, because we are introducing three frames of uh, a little bit. Uh, but this is not new. The same vector expressed in frame two can be expressed in frame one by using the rotation <coughs> with this syntax. Okay? The same vector expressed in frame 1 can be expressed in frame 0 by using the rotation from 0 to 1. Okay. And then the third one is, all, is also <coughs> true. They're all true. It implies very simply that if I take this one, I substitute it, the first one, I substitute it in the second one, it should be equal to the third one that the rotation from 0 to 2 is equal to the rotation from 0 to 1 multiplied by rotation from 1 to 2. So the composition of rotations is very easy. It's a matrix multiplication. Okay? We should pay attention uh, the way we do the composition and the way we do the multiplication. I have an example. But it's very simple. I just multiply the rotations and I can compose the rotation up to the final one. Okay? That's nice because I do want to have systematic ways to, to represent all this stuff because I have a robot that uh, needs to be controlled in real time. I, I want to have uh, small functions that do the operation. And the fact that those are systematic operations helps me a lot. Okay? Systematic way to compose. Okay, <coughs> these are the rotation, each defined with respect to the previous one. It does in current frame. What does it mean? Let's see the example. If I have a current frame, it means that uh, the rotation are considered with respect uh, to the previous one. Okay. If I do consider the rotation with respect to the same initial frame, I have uh, a different convention. It is the fixed frame rotation. And here, I have to reverse the order of the rotations. Let's see it with uh, an example. Okay. This object, uh, just have a look at the top left I ask, this is a, a, an object without symmetry, okay? I want to apply a rotation around Z, and then a rotation around the current Y, okay? The first rotation around Z gives me that the book is rotated and by 90 degrees, okay? It has this orientation. So in the first frame, like the frame that is connected to the object and the mm, reference frame are the same. <coughs> okay. So the, the comment 
is uh, where is the uh, where is the fixed frame here? You can imagine that uh, it's everywhere is fixed, okay, or is uh, just uh, superimposed. Yeah. You make a first rotation around that, and you have this position for this orientation for this. Okay. Then if I ask a rotation around y in current frame, y now. This one. So it's y prime. Okay. In the beginning, y was this one. But then I rotated, and now y is this one. So the rotation around y gives me this final rotation for the group. OK. Let's keep it, and we will see later what does it do. At the same time, I make another example that we cross the next page. I first make a, a rotation around y by reverse operation. First, the book starts from the same position orientation, okay? This is the same. First around y, and then the book has this orientation. And then around current z, this one. So reverse operation in current frame. Okay, let's do it in fixed frame. The same two rotations in fixed frame. This one is the same. Okay? The first, the rotation around Z is the same. But now, if I ask the rotation around Y, it means the original Y. The original Y is this one. And so the rotation is this one. Applied, of course, to this one. And so you have. Uh, the book in this rotation that is different from this one, of course. Okay? Because, of course, I'm using the same matrix what it got with a different meaning. However, I cannot proceed that it's equal to this one. Okay? So, Fix the current frame is the same, but we reverse the order of the matrix multiplication. <coughs> the same applies if I first rotate around y, so it's always the, the starting orientation is always the same. And then fixed z. So fixed z is this one. And then this one that is equal to the first one of equal to this one. Okay? So the concept is not complicated. It's simply if I want to rotate with respect to the previous frame, I have to make a fast successive multiplication. If I want to rotate always with respect to the same frame, the, the, the order of multiplication is reversed. In this case, is successive frame. So each one is with respect to the previous one. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the order will be rotation from 0 to 1, multiply the rotation from 1 to 2, gives us rotation from 0 to 2. And so on. Okay? <coughs> okay. Let us make uh, a 5, 10 minutes break. When uh, we will have uh, a teaching on Monday, we have three hours. If the teaching is theory, we are not going to make all the three hours, okay? because it's clean. Okay? When it will be practice, yes. Okay, so let us make 10 minutes break.